America's Wild West has long been tamed, leaving few reminders of the vanished frontier. The majestic buffalo, the bison, is one of the last living symbols of the country's beginnings. Once, they ranged as far as the eye could see. Yet, by 1900, fewer than 50 wild buffalo were left in the United States. These are the descendants of that last surviving herd. They roam the same rugged wilderness as their forebears, Yellowstone National Park. At the heart of the park are the remains of a gigantic volcano that erupted more than a half million years ago. Ash and debris, which spewed for thousands of square miles, are now blanketed by forest and grassland. There are still warnings, though, of violence below the surface. Water superheated by molten rock underground can spout geysers hundreds of feet in the air. The valley floor is pockmarked with hot springs, steam vents, and pots of boiling mud. Early settlers beholding this place for the first time were awestruck by its grandeur. The federal government was urged to protect the site. In 1872, it was declared a national park, the first in the country. Yellowstone was set up solely to protect the biggest thermal spectacle in the world. No one knew then that it would become the last stretch of wilderness left to the American buffalo. As many as 60 million bison once ranged across North America's plains and prairies. Perhaps no other continent, not even Africa, has produced large wild game in such numbers. The seemingly endless supply of buffalo made the life of the Plains Indians possible. A single animal provided hundreds of pounds of meat, as well as a hide to fashion teepees, blankets, and clothing. To the Indians, the buffalo was a gift of life from the gods. The vast herds, though, were not destined to last. White settlers were astonished to find so many of these animals. One eyewitness told of a herd 20 miles long and nearly 60 miles wide. But hunters began to kill ruthlessly to meet a soaring demand for buffalo robes and pelts. With the opening up of the railroad, cheap hunting excursions became possible for the first time. Built to face danger rather than flee, the buffalo often met their attackers head on. But it was an unequal battle. Before long, the thunder of bison on the plains would be only an echo. Yellowstone was one of the last places a buffalo could find sanctuary, though poaching continued for years. The herd dwindled to only a few dozen before the slaughter finally stopped. The bison, though, is a survivor. One of the few mammals to endure the last great ice age Buffalo have roamed the earth for more than 800,000 years. By bluff or battle, 
Only the strongest bulls win the right to father the next generation. A powerful male easily intimidates weaker bulls. A mere glance might be all it takes to deter a challenger. Size and strength determine a winner, forcing losers off to the side. A top-ranking male has plenty of cows to choose from. Frustrated bulls may take out their aggression by wallowing in dust, which also helps rid them of annoying insects. Once a leader finds a cow in season, he forms what's called a tending bond with her. Buffalo are highly social, and the bull escorts the cow everywhere, never straying more than a few feet from her side. If another male dares to approach, he's quickly made unwelcome. Some challengers, though, are more determined than others. Threats are exchanged between bulls of similar size and status. If one or the other refuses to take heed, a fight breaks out. Each animal struggles to keep his opponent's horns away from his own flanks. Goring would mean sure defeat, if not death. The challenger backs down, leaving the triumphant male free to mate. By siring offspring like himself, a powerful bull benefits the entire herd. This animal was the loser in a rutting battle. His wound would be his death sentence. In the fall, the bison's mating season comes to an end. The buffalo are at their fittest now, prepared for the lean times ahead. Some, however, will never have to suffer winter's onslaught. Coyotes are quick to take advantage of any casualties. Another coyote hopes to share in the meal. Its posture seems pleading, but is in fact a challenge. The coyote tries again. This time, it's more successful. Victory seems assured, but the others haven't given up just yet. Within a few days, the carcass will be picked clean. Even bits of hide could mean the difference later between life and death. Yellowstone winters are as harsh today as they were for the first settlers. Temperatures can plunge to 50 below.
buffalo can withstand severe cold, protected by their dense woolly pelts and extra layers of fat. Finding food poses a greater problem than staying warm. The bison is equipped, however, with a sense of smell so keen it can target clumps of grass in heavy snow. When food is scarce, once again the strongest buffaloes get top priority. Using its head as a plow, this one finishes the job. Bison generally seek easier ground rather than waste precious energy digging. On ridges, wind may have blown away the snow cover to expose a bounty of last summer's grass. The intense heat beneath Yellowstone's surface offers more than a spectacle. Without it, these playful otters and many other animals would not survive a winter here. The animals fish in holes in the ice, melted by a hot spring far below. A cutthroat trout can be within easy grasp. Graceful trumpeter swans winter in Yellowstone. They're able to feed in rivers steamed open by the heat beneath. The buffalo conserve energy by warming themselves on the heated ground. More importantly, the warmth may keep snow from settling too deep. Tufts of last year's grass are much easier to find. In winter, Yellowstone is a bleak and dangerous place. In its ceaseless wanderings in search of food, the bison often crosses lakes and rivers veiled by ice. In places, the frozen crust may be only a few inches thick. For this bull, the same heat that gave him warmth has now created a trap. With all his strength, the buffalo attempts to pull himself out, but the crevice is too deep. His only hope lies in breaking enough ice to reach water shallow enough to stand in. Other buffalo wander in, perhaps drawn to follow a well-used trail. After six hours of struggle, cold and exhaustion take their toll.
another buffalo approaches, seemingly oblivious to the threat. Wisely, it decides to proceed no further. Winter gives way to longer days in April, as a hint of spring washes over the park. Canada geese explore fresh avenues for food. Golden-eyed drakes flutter with excitement as their breeding season approaches. For the buffalo, though, melting ice and snow and make for even more treacherous going. This bull is more fortunate than the other. Snow may still be on the ground when buffalo cows give birth. This mother bore twins a rarity among bison. Her calves are no more than a week old. Licking not only cleans the newborn, but also cements the bond between mother and calf. The twins hurry to investigate the new arrival. Their mother is permitted to inspect it. Cow's fascination in each other's offspring may help create the social ties that later bind the herd together. A coyote watches, but keeps its distance. Before they can stand on their own, Young buffalo can be highly vulnerable. The cow must try to gently nudge her offspring to its feet. Coyote, though, rarely attack bison calves so long as the mother is around. After a few stumbles, the calf totters forward with the cow to safely rejoin the herd. The coyote will have to look elsewhere for food. She's a mother with pups of her own to keep an eye on. With her young safely back in the den, she can go off to hunt. Coyotes typically prowl alone, but will occasionally hunt in packs. Their calls signal a good opportunity, a newborn elk. Using their numbers to advantage, the coyotes surround the mother elk. Some draw her attention, while others tighten the net. The mother puts up a good defense, but there are too many coyotes to chase away. When she gets tired, the predators will close in on the calf. The odds are about to change, however. Buffalo meander over to investigate the commotion. 
the coyotes suddenly seem to lose their nerve. With buffalo milling around, it's difficult for them to press home their attack. Even in a group, coyotes are no match for several bison. The mother elk and her calf slip away, saved by the imposing presence of the buffalo. These huge beasts, made even more powerful by their unity, often benefit other animals in their path. Calves begin to learn how to live in the herd soon after they're born. Play is more than just a pastime. These young buffalo are developing skills that will be useful in later life. Mock fighting and headbutting take up a lot of their time and energy. One mother, however, appears to think that this particular game has gone on long enough. Gambling calves are a good sign that buffalo have not only survived in Yellowstone, they have prospered. From a nearly devastated population of 50 at the beginning of the century, the Yellowstone buffalo now number more than 2,000 animals. Against great odds, one of the last living symbols of America's frontier, the buffalo, has endured. And on Thursday night at 7.30, the myths surrounding sharks and rays in a new wildlife series, Watery World.